building downtown. Building downtown. Building downtown. I, I feel like I look at the numbers and I forget the population difference. You know, I mean, because the population of Canada, like the whole country is only like three times the population of the state that I live in or not even that, you know? know, So I I, I think of it on a map, right? And I like, I've been in Montreal, Toronto area. And like, I think of these cities and I think of all these people and I just wrong. And so I'm like, how are you so slow when we're vaccinating one, two, three million people a day? And then it's just like the population difference is so vast, but my brain just never synthesizes no, that part no, of the story. No, and, and, and absolutely. And I think the geographic uh, size of Canada is huge as well for the small population. So we have populations of people like, in, you know, the r- remote areas even uh, where, where it's going to, you know, there's going to be some challenges in terms of, um, of, of making sure that the vaccine is delivered. It's a huge country with a small population. How about so them, the, pe- the people in remote areas, do you know they got hit with COVID? Absolutely. There have been uh, there have been some of our indigenous uh, citizens who's uh, where there's been outbreaks in tribes, uh, for sure. So even the even remote areas have been hit with uh, with uh, COVID-19, wow. for sure. Now, are they with the everything here that is staggered is primarily by age as well um, and first responders, healthcare workers and all that. Do you have also like special medical allowances for medical conditions or is it strictly by age right now? So, Amy, that's a great question, because the interesting fact is if you're an 81 year old marathon runner, so you're 81 years old, you're in tip top shape, you know, strong, muscular, you're on no medications, you have no medical problems and you run marathons. Comparing that person to a a 55 year old kidney transplant patient on immunosuppression. Mm-hmm. If both of them get COVID-19, the 81-year-old has a higher chance of dying. Mm-hmm. So the most powerful predictor of dying from COVID is your age. Right. So, so, so the way that I think the approach Canada has taken has been driven by age and not so much by medical comorbidities. You know, uh, you know I work with uh, patients who have um, developmental disorders, who have uh, you know, things like Down syndrome or, or um, um, other similar um, medical issues where, you know, their risk um, is, is still lower than, than patients who are older. So I think the, the strategy Canada has taken is the right one to primarily go by age. Um, and so that's, that's, that's what we've been doing here. How, uh, how frustrated are you getting over all of this? Because right at the start, you know, you, you sound, you're like, I'd love to talk about something else. And throughout the, the past two times we've had you on, you seemed uh, really optimistic that we were closing in on an end. No, you didn't, you know, specify on a date or a certain period of time, but you felt like, you know, we're on the right track here, but is it, is it, are your patients wearing thin? You know, it is, you know, I'm, and part of it is my job. I'm the site chief of medicine at university hospital. So anytime there's an outbreak, anytime there's an uh, outbreak within the hospital system, especially it occupies all of my time. You know, I'd rather be, taking care of patients, teaching medical students, teaching residents and, 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 and not focused on this administrative bullshit of dealing with this. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's important work. Don't get me wrong, but I'm getting sick of it. Like when, when I had to shut down my uh, hospital wards, the medicine wards to admissions. So then I, I'm spending my time moving patients from one hospital to another, you know, it's just, um, it's, um, and it is wearing thin on not just on me, but especially on our nurses and doctors who are, putting all of the work and taking care of, of, of patients under horrible circumstances. And kind of what I told you guys last time, I feel for the non-COVID patients, like the, all of the patients whose operations get canceled or who, who have to be moved from one hospital to another, which is very disruptive to their care. Um, so, so it is wearing thin. It's wearing thin on me personally too. Like, you know, we, we want to, all of us want to be able to travel and experience life and experience culture and, and um and you know that that our way of life has been taken a- away from us and i just want to you know, go I'm, to a concert exactly fuck exactly. all the rest of y'all traveling and everything else stay home watch some music exactly 100 percent, 100 percent. you know and and i know but i, I feel it Abe, I'm, I'm super frustrated like you know uh every every march I, we have a trip where all of the guys go to vegas and we we take in f- a fight if the ufc's on, on, in vegas and stuff. all of that you know our, our the enjoyment of life has gone away now it's temporary we have to be patient and and, and i tell myself that that all the time but um it, it's wearing thin on the general population it's it's wearing thin on me and i'm supposed to be someone who 
tells other people to be patient and be calm. And so, so, so I mean, I'm kind of joking and just being dramatic, but the realistic thing is here we all are sitting here having this raving conversation on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah, it I know, is my nuts. Day. Yeah, and I'm drinking a Diet Pepsi. Yeah, I can get a bar. Water. Right. I don't even go to bar. I don't even like bars. And I wish no. that you guys didn't exist and I was at a bar right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. Yeah, when the lockdown lifted here, uh, I had to go get a, a new phone. Well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to. And uh, I went to the mall and I, I fucking hate going to the mall. I only go unless I absolutely have to. And I felt it felt so good to just be in the mall. And it wasn't real crowded, but there was <laughs> enough people there. And it's just like, oh, look, look, the teenagers are enjoying themselves, probably getting up and getting into trouble later. And like, oh, look at these people. It, just, it was just nice to see people out and about. Um, so, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Amy. Even I haven't been I've been to like fucking four movies in the theater my entire life. If everything's finally safe one day, I might actually go to one and enjoy it. And not take it you know, the it. funny thing is, I don't know if I should be saying this on the podcast, but <laughs> there was a time I did take my kids to um, uh, a movie three weeks ago, like after the second wave, but before this third one, it was a few, several weeks ago where the, when the theaters were open mm. briefly and just to feel normal. And you know what? We were the only ones in there. So weird. And the movie so was not fucking, normal. some fucking old movie, some <laughs> shitty movie. It was it was horrible. Like there's no new movies coming out, right? I haven't seen a new release, like high quality, no new release movie. Really, so they are sh- down here. Okay, there was some shit movie that was like playing from fucking five years ago, yeah. <laughs> and this was Silver City. Like it was a big movie theater, like uh, yeah. where there's an IMAX and stuff. But, uh, at least at that time, they didn't seem in Canada, in, in London, anyways. There was no new releases coming out, and all the new releases are coming out on um, on net Netflix or on yep. Amazon Prime, or like you can't even you can't even go to the theater to watch a high a high quality movie it seems uh so it is weird the whole thing at least thing they let you in the building jesus christ <laughs> yeah, i know i know i know <laughs> i shouldn't complain and you know what i sh- i really shouldn't complain i mean but i do feel like well, imagine what our small businesses are going through how many restaurants have gone under how many um my dry cleaner guys uh wow. suffering you know everyone is going through so much economically we can you know it's uh, it's been horrible Talking about economically, uh, have you heard of this uh, man named Roman Baber? I don't want to say it wrong. Barber? Baber? Baber. Baber is the right way to say it. Roman Baber, who's, uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was working for Doug Ford, and he got dismissed because apparently he came out with a statement from 14 or 15 doctors in Ontario saying that lockdown is actually hurting more people than um, helping than helping yeah because he well he was claiming all kinds of uh, suicides and overdoses and all of that with it right not just the financial but he was also saying that businesses are diving like you said right but a bunch of businesses are closing down how do you feel about that have you heard about yeah, that? he should he should not have lost his job i mean people should have their opinion i mean even though i might not agree with that i i do know i do know that because of these restrictions people are suffering 100 percent and businesses are going down and there may be an argument to say that that in specific countries the restrictions are more harmful than good maybe there is some data i don't know i don't think we should be firing people for voicing oh, this their was opinion. The, this is here in ontario and he was working under doug ford and he said he got 14 or 15 like medical doctors from ontario backing him up giving statements that the lockdown that there's no evidence of lockdown helping the cases and that that it's that it does more harm in terms of overdoses. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, if he's in Doug, I don't know. I did I didn't hear about the story, but if he's in Doug Ford's cabinet, I guess Doug Ford has the right to kind of fire him because that yeah, he doesn't just represent him. his view. Just dismissed him right away because it was. I, yeah, I, I don't know. And the, the news and the news are horrible place to get news nowadays. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because it's just. It, it, everything is either fear more 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 morganing or whatever the word is or or you know what I mean or it's not a clear story. And in the news, from what I understood, Doug Ford dismissed him right away just for standing up to him and saying that um, Doug Ford's opinion might not be right. But I don't know how much truth is to there to that. Yeah, I, 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 but I, but listen, I hear you completely. I think we even if I disagree with someone, we need to have let everyone have their opinion. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know what, if it's not true, it'll be drowned out. But I think firing someone for having an opinion is not good. And I think it's a it's a reasonable argument to say that that co- the COVID-19 pandemic has harmed uh, and the restrictions because of it have harmed a lot of people. There's nothing wrong with saying that and debating 
a little bit debating about what is the proper way to move forward. Do we need to do all of these measures or not? And 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 and, and in, in the end, you know, um, make make uh, make a decision for yourselves in terms of what you believe. But you know, personally, I think um, in the in the in the interest of public safety, the data is so strong for social distancing, wearing masks. Um, you know, I think these things need to be continued. But but with respect to how businesses are operating and what we can do to ease their burden and talking about the harm that the restrictions are having on society is super important. And we need to be able to evolve our thinking and evolve the way we plan <clears throat> based on that and not just say that we're going to stay in masks and social distance and uh, forever. You know, so I, I'm disappointed that uh, that 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 his opinion was not heard and that he had to lose his job over it it was sort of a decent pr move too right because that gave him exposure and a spark i don't know he kind of disappeared but we're trying to talk to him but it's yeah, we're trying to get him on the show we've talked to his constituents <laughs> say that with air quotes because that's the only people i can get through to and uh yeah we, we, still we wanted to yet. hear who these doctors are and i want to know what the damn story and... is here um and like i i get i agree with what you're saying you know but even if you don't agree with his opinion that's still a conversation to be had, right? So yeah. Building downtown. Building downtown. Building downtown. Building downtown.